I just wanted the fans to, you know, pop their shit for 10 quick seconds. Uh, welcome to another glorious episode of Come On Now, the podcast. You are here with your lovely moderator slash host, Don, not to be confused with Don King. My hair is a lot more lavish, as you can see. Shout out to Renee when I saw her today. I'm here with my co-hosts and the reason you guys listen to this show. I allow the guys to introduce themselves. Guys, tune in. Yo, it's come on now, and you're speaking with Nick Taylor, or you're listening to Nick Taylor, uh, three-time Grey Cup champion of the CFL Football League, uh, former NFL football player, arena football player, Division One basketball player, um, been around the world, did a lot, been in the sports world doing a long time. Um, I had a 500 batting average um, in uh, the third grade in Little League Baseball. Yeah, I'm that well-rounded. Okay. Rudy Rodriguez, Shomot here. What? I, I, I don't believe that. that. No, I don't. Um, Rudy Rodriguez, Shomot <laughs> here. By now, you know I'm the person that yells a lot, talks a lot, has lots to say about lots of shit, and I'm right, I got plenty to say today. So let's go. All right, we're going to dive right in. March Madness, all things. Caitlin. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Like, subscribe, follow. We appreciate you. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, as I was uh, colorfully interrupted, we're going to start right into March Madness. Caitlin Clark got her lick back, as the young kids say, and um, UConn looks unstoppable. All right, guys, what do you guys think? March Madness. Hey, it was everything that we hoped for. It gave us the fireworks. Uh, it lit the candles. Everything was popping up. We got to see Caitlin Clark go absolutely off. Nobody could stop her. She was shooting the ball from 30 freaking feet every time, man. Van Litt got lit up. Flaw J. Johnson was flaw. She didn't step up. And, yeah, she was flaw. She didn't step up and guard Caitlin Clark like a big star supposed to in that situation. Yes, yeah, Rudy. Hey, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me break down the story, man. In our high school championship game, we played we played crop high school to go to the championship. Rudy, you remember. And I wasn't going to say I was the star on the team, but I was a major player. I was 1B or, you know, I was right behind Peacock. Peacock was the man. He's a Georgia Tech graduate. And I was the engine that drove the car. I was the general. You can call me A.B. Johnson if you will, you know. But also on the defensive side, I knew as a senior – and one of the top players, the top guard, obviously, we played against one of the best guards in the country, and my coach was driving us home, and I literally told him, I said, hey, coach, put me on that motherfucker. If we're going to lose, we're going to lose with me guarding him. Like, that's how I felt. At least I voiced it to him. You know, he, he still ain't listened to me, but the, <laughs> the point is, as that motherfucking person, I stepped up for the challenge because that's what I wanted. Like, if the game did go south and we, you know, the game did get out of hand, I would have been that guy that, that guarded him because the last time we played that team, this dude was doing crossovers. He was doing a MJ hands up, you know, signature move after he hit the shots against us, crossover, bang. And I just wasn't down for it. Like, as, as that person, as the lead guard, I, that's not how I wanted to go out. And I think on LSU's side, the only person that had a chance to guard her in that situation, I think with the size and the length and the foot speed to actually move laterally and take push offs from her was Flaw J. It wasn't Van Litt, obviously. It wasn't number 13. She was slow foot as hell. She couldn't move for shit. She got blown by every time. Van Litt was just too small and everybody's going on Van Litt. That's not all her fault. That's, that's, that's Monkey's fault. Monkey put her in a fucked up situation. The one time she went under the screen, it started off early. I, I know we're we're doing big on this on this game right now, but the the first play she got screened, and next thing you know, she went under it. But the only reason she went under it because the screen came and it kind of caught off by off guard, and, and the only way to get you know that to the shot was to go under it. So that's what she did. That's the only other time she went under the screen. I hear people talking about why is they playing? Why is she going under the screen? She went under the screen one time. 
She didn't really go under any other time. She could kind of try to fight over the rest of the game, but she was just too small. I mean, Caitlin Clark was just a beast. She was giving it to her any which way. And that's just what it was. And then we had we had Angel Reese in drop coverage most of the games. Like, that's on Monkey, man. Like, you don't come out there on somebody that dynamic and you don't blitz her from the get-go. You 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 stop that shit from the get-go. Like none of that crap that she's doing should have been done. Like we're blitzing her, we're taking the ball out of her hands. I, if she if they would have beat us, she would have had to have 30 assists. And I'd have been fine with that. But her to have 40 damn points, that's not how she's beating me. I'm taking the ball out of her hands. I'm running a matchup zone one three one and I'm trapping her and getting the ball out of her hands. I'm running an extended two three while giving up the free throw line to their big man, let them shoot it from there. It's, it's different things that I'm throwing at them. And once I seen that I was playing Iowa in Elite Eight, I'm coming up with defensive strategies for that. I don't think Mulkey was well prepared for that. She just went and sat in her little man defense, and they sagged, and they, they did nothing that was challenging for, for Caitlin Clark. They threw a little person on her. They threw the other bench player on her, the other person that played valuable minutes. And there was no answer for her. And I think there were answers that you could have did rather than what they just did in that game. Um, um, but all in all, the, the, the whole thing was, was dynamic. Um, Iowa outran them, man. They, it was like a bunch of Usain Bolt white girls flying by them every time off of rebounds, off of, off of steals, off of, off of made shots. They were down the court before them. And the game really could have been more of a blowout because I don't know what their backcourt balance was on LSU or even their big man, because Angel Reese got blown by by 45 a couple of times, and another another person, a couple of big man, blew past her the whole game. And a couple of times, they were down there by themselves, and LSU just with their athleticism was able to get back and get a couple of blocked shots when they were out of position. So the game could have really been worse, and the missed layups, of course, because um, they should really lower the rim of, the, of, of women's basketball to nine and a half, nine and one-thirds, Nine feet, um, because their athleticism is 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 not conducive to 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 the to the, the size of the rim. So, um, I think that's one change that women's sports need to make, just so it could be a little bit more, you know, visual for our eyes as viewers to to enjoy the game. Just because that athleticism, um, is is really terrible. I mean, we had Angel Reese out there just throwing the ball at the backboard. It looked like the Memphis Grizzlies grindhouse back in the days. It looked like Zach Randolph out there, Daryl Arthur, Tony Allen, and the gang just throwing the ball at the at the rebound at the rim, getting their own offensive rebounds and just going back up. That's the only thing they could do to score. They, their offense was was very putrid, um, but they they still hung around. I I don't know what that says about both teams, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that for girls who can't jump hamburger high off the ground, um. It, it, it's, I, I think they need to lower the rim. Um, and then we have Caitlin Clark, who is the uh, 15 feet, 15 inch vertical version of of, of Steph Curry. Uh, it was just, it was just a good thing to watch. It was a good night. It was, you know. So let's go to Rudy. Um, Rudy telling me to let's go. He want to talk. He got to weigh in. So we're coming. No, I was, I was just hoping you talk about. Or we're gonna go back and forth then to the next game. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We got. All right. Yeah, women's, we got. Women, look, women's basketball sucks. Yeah. Women's basketball sucks. We it, can sit here and and and, and we can talk a, about everything. The I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about the game itself. Yeah. Women's basketball sucks. It's not enjoyable to watch unless you have someone like Caitlin Clark playing basketball. Because we're not watching that game if it's not for her. We need to stop the lie and stop the cap and stop talking about how LSU so damn good. LSU scores points because they force turnovers. And they get putbacks on layups because they cannot shoot, even though they had their best shooting game of the season, possibly on Friday. Oh, on, on Monday. Uh, um, no, they hit, they hit like four threes in the first half. Yeah. That, they, but, but, they for, the game, for the game, they, they shot. I think they, I think they had five or six that they hit. No, but for the game, they shot 33% or something like that. They don't shoot that high in the regular season. <laughs> they, they shot four threes the whole game versus UCLA. Four. I think it was four. They made two. They are not a good shooting team. Their best player, people don't want to hear it. Their best player is Flage Johnson. It's not Angel Reese. Well, She's the not. most. No, not everyone knows it. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, because no. Nobody, because the people that say that don't watch basketball. They're not even watching this team play. They're, they don't. I watched that girl Flage. She has a deadly mid-range game. She's not a deep shooter. 
But from 16, 17 feet, she comes across looking like Rip Hamilton. And she hits shots. She was 10 for 18, 23 points, led the team in scoring. Let's not lie about what Angel Reese did. Angel Reese's first half was very good. But it was all, it's all layups. But do you think that? And she did not miss them. And they were off of turnovers primarily. Do you think her ankle was a big thing? Her ankle? Not, not at all. I mean, she would play a lot. I don't don't, don't, don't want to hear it. She was one for 10 shooting layups. She's not shooting jump shots. She was still grabbing rebounds. She was still spiking the ball out of bounds on block shots and still flexing away. No. But most of layups. Most of her block shots was from her being 6'3. And, and, you know, and maybe well, her offense was affected from well, her vertical and, from and one, and, one of, and one of her freaking block shots, she literally crossed through both of the girls' arms and didn't get called for a foul. She had another one on Caitlin Clark on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a break where she clearly fouled her. They didn't call it. Her foul out was a block. Absolutely was yeah. a block. Yeah. It was a bad call. But you know what? Literally three seconds before, Iowa has the ball and the girl gets tackled. And they gave it a turnover, and that is what led to the damn block charge. They missed the call there. Don't know why, because that was clearly a foul. The girl got flat out tripped. And then it was a block. I'm in the grip. It was a block. You're talking about the one under the basket? What's yeah, the, it was been an and one. It would have been an and one, would have made it a seven point game potentially. And she fouls out instead of a 10 point game, 84 74, minute 45 left. That was a block. But she got away with probably five other fouls in that game that were not called. I- it is what it, it is. What it is. Iowa's better than LSU. People don't have to like it. They're better. They're they're far more skilled offensively. Um, are, are they? Or can they shoot strong. better? They can shoot it's, better. Is that more? Oh, no, Nick, is shooting not a, a skill? No, I mean, but. It, shooting, not a, shooting is probably the, the biggest skill in basketball um, today. It, it, it is, but I'm because saying. Because you're LSU a lover had, of the. They had they could dribble the ball well. They could they could they could handle the ball. Flaje, Flaje, Morrow, they 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 they're, 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 they're on, solid. Man. They're not they're not more skilled than Iowa, and Iowa has the best player in the world. That's it. There you go. They have the best player in the world, and there's there's reasons why Flaje couldn't be guarding Caitlin Clark early. There's you, reasons. You have Do to, I think really? Mulch, No, you don't. Do you put Jimmy Butler on LeBron James in the first quarter? Fuck no. No. No, you don't. But they, you, but, LSU have another fifth. They have another four right. girls. I'm, I'm, no, they I'm, don't. They play seven. No, they have another three girls that can score fifteen points a game. That's Ooh, a, that's... great! They and, and you know what? They did, and they still lost by seven. They because... still lost by. If you lose twenty three points from Flage Johnson because she's exhausted chasing Caitlin Clark around, they still scored eighty seven points. If you hold and Caitlin lost twenty seven. What? 20, if you hold and if, you, yeah, and you might hold it to 27, and the other girls might go for 30 because they're getting backdoor layups the whole goddamn game. I agree with you. There should have been adjustments in defensive st- strategy. I yes, agree with you. 100%. You're gonna, you have to change the defense totally. constantly. The yes, whole game. The whole game. Oh, the whole game. Unless you, you, have can't sit, you can't sit here and say, Flage, go guard her. Don't commit fouls. Because they put her on, they put they put her on her with with uh, four fouls, so and she blew right by her. She blew right by her. Not the, the other the, one time. Not the other time. She she actually held her to a bad shot. She did nothing. There are double digits at that point. Uh, like the, the the whole the whole strategy at that point was pray because it, it was the game was over. The game was over. But in the first half, Iowa jumps out. Clark knocks some shots down, and then Clark starts turning the ball over. And I'm I love Caitlin Clark. But she made some mistakes in that game early on that could have cost Iowa the game. Because LSU went on that run, took over, went up five, 31 points in a 10-minute quarter by a women's team. And and LSU had hit, I think, three or four threes in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. And then Reese got a steal, another steal here. And it's just layups. But she they get it back, obviously, because – that's what you were going to have in this game. It's a game of runs, as we all know. They went up eight. And, uh, they, huh? They went up eight. LSU went up well, eight. They, when the first half? Yeah, in the first yeah. quarter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you have a situation where third quarter, yeah, I know Hallie Van Lith cannot guard Caitlin Clark. It's not her fault. It's not her Bro- fault. 
Yo, that's like asking you to guard some guy who's 6'5". You can do whatever you can do, but he's going to shoot over you. You well, can't well, do anything about it. Well, you can't you, do that for, for me because you know what I can oh, do? stop. But, your ego no, is... No, you, you no, 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 no. Are you gonna listen? Are you gonna listen? Just listen to this. If you can jump higher, yeah, yeah, so, and, and, and if you do that, you might foul out in the no, first quarter because, too. Because I'm quicker. Yeah. I'm oh, quicker. Matt, today you would have fouled out every game. No, 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 Rudy. I knew how to play with my hands and my and I was I was yeah, a very. Use your, I use I didn't your. use my hands as much as you think I did. I was smart with. I would jab well, at. I, a, you did, I, I, mean, I would jab. Understand. I would jab at a player and and play mind games with a ball handler and make them uncomfortable. Oh. And but Van Lit can't do that because she can't move laterally with right. her at all. But, By the way, the one you said that Flage fucking stopped her on the, sh the jump shot, she fouled her on the arm and then fouled her on the legs. And they didn't call it. No, it was a clear foul. It, it was a clear I, I don't think, I don't think foul. So, but, but I'm, I'm going to say. I do not think so. Oh, okay, but I'm it going, was a clear foul. I'm, I'm, going back, I'm going back to the Van Lit point. She was, I never she finished said, the point. You, okay, yeah. okay. No, I'm just, 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 no, just going to say why you need a person that could quit. Yeah, like, she, like, that's, that's Virginia. They had guards who were smaller, but they could. Patrick Beverly, they wait to to to. to make why, it did that, why did that game happen? It, it, they won sixty four fifty four, and Caitlin Clark had thirty two. Yeah. With all that, Patrick Beverly, they that game was close because no one for Iowa scored besides Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna forget the main component of this game. The second best player for Iowa, Stolke, forty five, was in foul trouble the entire game and was a virtual non factor. They had the big white girl, O'Grady, 44, who can barely move. And she basically shut down Reese in the second half. She was. And, but, but she can't score. She's not an offensive threat. But Stalky has had a game this year where she put up 47. She's a ball player, and she barely played. Those other two guards, I'm not even remember, trying to remember their names. Martin, was, Mar Martin and Alfred Tur, I think his name. Name Gabby Marshall had three points. That's, she three in the first. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like that's the person you got to make try to score. Like she's what? a six point a game scorer. But, like you have to. Two, but the other two girls had twenty. But I'm saying that person who's guarding Gabby Marshall, you have to be a help defender, like overly help on everybody else, and you make your way back to her a little bit later because she's a thirty. Um, she's a thirty percent three point shooter. Anyway, she doesn't really shoot the ball, and you and, and you don't come um, up with a, a game plan where you're helping off of other people. If you're if you're gonna stay in your man, you don't. Overly help off of Gabby Marshall, then you're crazy. You I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not sitting here saying that they didn't should have made adjustments on defense. Okay. I'm not sitting here saying that, but I think this this narrative that LSU has more skill is flawed. They I don't. Think, they don't have more skill. I think. I they're think more. I, they're more athletic. Yeah. They're bigger. The game was close because the rebounding disparity was massive. As it should be. As it sh okay yeah because they're just bigger. Okay. And they don't call over the back fouls anymore nowadays because boxing out seemingly doesn't matter because I watched box outs where the girl's arms are over their shoulders. That's a foul. When I grew up, that was a foul. Now today it's not a foul, which is weird because now everything has to call the foul, but if now don't, they don't call loose call fouls the same if way. You don't, if not, you don't touch them. No, if you, bro, you, it's impossible to not touch someone when you're literally the same height and you, your arm is reaching over their shoulder. If yeah. you're up like this, it's different. But if your arm is over their shoulder, it's a foul every single time. And they're not calling it. But there was a massive disparity in rebounding, and that's the reason the game was close. And I also thought Caitlin Clark kept it close in the second half. She took some heat check shots from 35 feet that yeah. actually turned back around into buckets for LSU. Because uh, what happens on a long miss, it's exactly what LSU needs to get back into a game. It just happens that they can't yeah. really shoot. And I mean, look, Angel Reese has the most fluffed up numbers ever. Her points, fine. She missed four free throws in the second half. She missed nine layups. Her 20 rebounds, she had 10 offensive boards. Yeah. I would bet without looking that six of them are off of her own misses. Uh, eight off of her them. own misses. Eight of them. Eight. Maybe, okay, you're, maybe you're, okay. nine. You're, you're going to you're gonna get in trouble. With, you're gonna get in trouble with that. You know, you're you're doing more than I am. But, no, I'm just saying. It because was. God forbid you, God forbid you criticize Angel Reese no, for I'm, fucking committing crimes. No, I'm gonna keep it real. I was rooting for them. I, 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 man, let's say it. Cause but, you, but she, but she was rebounding the ball to herself. Like she's shooting it, rebounding, shooting it, rebounding, shooting it. Rebounding. Like those are fluffy fucking stats. I, and I you, hate that they make it seem like she's doing something so incredible. I think Flage is the best player. I think the game should get run through Flage offensively. Yeah, and yeah. they don't. Because they have this thought that Angel Reese is so great. She's a great hustle player. She's a yeah. dog. Dirty. I might say dirty. I mean like a dog. Like, yeah, yeah. The dirt, she's dirty yeah. work. 
you yeah. to, to to make plays. I'm not calling her a dirty debutant, yeah. yeah. Like the LA no. Times. No, 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 I, no. I, I, but, but like in terms of like Dennis Rodman, like you're getting in on it. You know, that's how she plays, and that's how she scores because she can't shoot. No, she can't shoot. You, no. you know, I but think at the end of the day, she should stay I, in college. I, she turned pro today. She, she should stay. Make that money I, I and stay in college. I, 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 don't, I, I, I think the well's going to run dry because her game will not period. translate. It will not translate. I'm so sorry. Just the way she plays and, and she tried to force the, ball, force the ball left all the time. And it's just not a pretty thing to see, pretty thing to behold. What did, like, what did you think of the defense that was being played, for example, on – I thought they should have gone into Morrow a lot more. Because oh, every she, time Morrow, 24, I think is – every time she posted up on the right block – she, she scored. She they went, played her wrong. I was playing her, shifted to the left. And she kind of like. And they're literally dropping it to the left. And it's boom, layup. Boom, yeah, she layup. Dropped right it through. was there the entire game. That was the matchup. If you're going to take advantage of a matchup, because that girl was too big and athletic for whoever was guarding her on Iowa. However, a lot of these things that we say. You mentioned it looked like a, I guess, what'd you call it, Usain Bolts? Yeah, they were, they were the white oh, Usain there's a, there's, there's a reason for that. You have the best passer in college women's basketball. Rudy, that, that's, that's, that's not that. They're, they're running the floor. Because they know they're they going to get the ball. They're running okay. the floor, that, and they know that. And, and, and Caitlin Clark puts it on a dime. If you're going to say it like that, but that was just bad. Like, it was one play. Well, no, dude, Angel, but it's, 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 it's how they play. Angel Reese person 45 was behind her three steps. And yeah, they lost because, the Angel and she, jog, because Angel jogging down the floor and, she, and the girl from Iowa sprinting down the every floor. Every time I see Angel like this and the girl, oh, and, hey, and then I went back, I went, you, I went back, Rudy, I say, nah, maybe because LSU were tired. They only played like six players. And uh, you no. know, the, the one person off the bench played 15 minutes. But then I looked at Iowa, they only played six players also. Well, six, seven players too, yeah. <laughs> I say, well, they're just in better shape and they just know that LSU are, are lazy. And LSU really – was really lackadaisical with the ball on inbounds. There's a couple of times those balls should have been stolen on the inbound pass after after Iowa scored and they got lucky. The ball got like bounced out of bounds a couple of times and things of that nature. But um, whew, it was, I mean, it was a good night. Don't, don't get me wrong; it, it's it's tough to watch. Besides Caitlin Clark shooting the ball the way she does, she had 41. She had nine threes, and she had 12 assists. And realistically, she could have had 18 to 20 assists for all the layups her teammates. She would have had to have 30 to beat me. Well, she would, she would have had half she, she, well, fine, but I don't have to tell you she she was she, <laughs> she 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 had twelve assists and her second best player wasn't on the floor, which is pretty flipping remarkable. Yeah. Um, we got UConn playing Iowa. We know we didn't even talk about Paige Bukers and I and beating Juju Watkins. Yeah. Um, I watched that game. I don't think UConn has a chance in hell. I think Iowa's going to run them off the floor. Uh, wow. They're just too talented. There's too many drop. There's too many missing people on UConn. UConn's people don't know UConn's got tons of injuries. The fact that they're here is sort of another remarkable. Sort of a it's remarkable yeah. because they got like 70 points on the bench right now, injured. The people don't know that I UConn for the last three years has been injury after injury after injury. Yeah, oh, yeah, Paul was out for a year. I know that. Yeah. Uh, that I think Iowa's going to run them off the floor, and I think that, and we're and NC State's a sweet story, and they're going to play South Carolina. And I think Iowa to beat U.S. and uh, South Carolina has to play better than they played versus LSU. Well, well last year they they, they they sagged off a lot of times, and, and a couple of the South well, Carolina, but South Carolina players kind of worked on that that part of the game. I don't think you can just give her they that shot. Shoot, like, they don't shoot. They don't I, shoot that much though. I don't you, think Raven Johnson still doesn't shoot that well. She she does, but I mean, they blew a twenty. They blew a twenty-two point lead against Indiana, a game they damn near lost. And um, you know, South Carolina, I, it, yeah, those. I look forward to that being the national championship because if it's not, no one's going to watch it. Yeah, yeah. If Iowa's not playing in that game, oh, cr credit, by the way, 12.3 million viewers. Come on now. The most w watched women's sporting event. Come on that's, now. Not basketball, sporting event in history. Um, 12.3 million. However, the Duke NC State men's ACC tournament game got 15 plus million. It's crazy. A basic ACC game that you see three times a year drew that like that. That's all I got in the women. I mean, I don't know, I don't know if we can talk about the men because our producer is yelling at us I, behind I, the scenes. I think we should delve into the <laughs> NCAA a little bit more. Everything else could get, you know, brought down a little bit up, a little bit. But I think this is a big thing over the weekend. Everybody I agree. I agree. Uh, 
I look forward to seeing DJ Burns on NC, NC State. It's funny. NC State has both. UConn's got both teams in. That's great. I that's, think that's crazy. Awesome. Really? Crazy. First time ever you have two teams that have both teams, men and women. DJ Burns is so fun to watch. I love watching that kid. So what do you, He's so, what, so happy, but I, I got to see if he can get that shot over Zach Eady, who's 7-4. So, like, the first 15 games, he never even scored 20 points, but now it's a, a, a relevation. Uh, they adjusted. They adjusted at some point. But <laughs> now he's getting, like, 20 every other game, and it, it, it changed your season. Uh, wow, that's amazing. Well, Edie, what do you think about Edie? Pro? I think he's, I think he's a pro. I don't think I, – I, re- I watch so many of these things where they're saying he's not a pro. I – I can't stand it because it just it's 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 just too much based on how the NBA is played now. Who gives a shit how the NBA play is played now? But great coaches use their players that they adjust to their players. This whole need to have a bunch of jump shooters is ridiculous. Could Zach could Zach Eady be exposed by certain guys defensively? Sure, and that guy still has to guard him three yeah. feet from the rim. Think- and you know what you do? You expose them right back. Like this, this, this narrative is like saying, could Shaq play today? Absolutely. He would have 50. He'd get fouled every time. Zachy is a, if you watched him over the last two years, Zachy's skill level, footwork, they've improved so much. That he uh, went back to school for a reason. I'm, I'm interested to see it. it. It's improved. He's improved incredibly. He went 40. 40 and 16. I mean, the, the but- dude is, Killing it, but there's, there's been players like that who's been great in college and and they fall off and they're in, not in the seven end. four. That's also true. They're um, six, like Tyler Hands, bro. He's six eight. Yeah, the only you other person that would. only other person you could compare to him size wise was uh, Hashim to be, but he was never an offensive. He was person. never offense. He was all defense. All defense, and he never and, had the footwork and the, or questions about and the questions about Edie are not offensive. They're defensive. Defense, yeah, I don't yeah. want 7-4 Edie shooting a 23-footer. No. Now, could he extend his game to about 15 feet? That would yeah. be nice. But I don't want that big dude out shooting threes. I want oh. that man to m- m- mash people because that was an example of a game when we talk about three versus two. Dalton Connect kept banging threes, and Edie kept getting layups. But that kept him in the game because they really, you know, this man was altering shots the whole game. Hey, Connect, I liked him. I like Connect. Man. He, you know, he, he reminds me of a, ty, a Tyler Hero, mm-hmm. uh, Herder type player. Like, he gets to his own spot. I don't know if it's just a white boy in him that could get to his spot and just elevate. And it's just a sweet, smooth looking jump shot. He could run the baseline and, and hit the threes. And, you know, these seniors. You know, I think the Miami Heat, they're finding the next two shooters. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, for real. Got, right? uh, uh, what is the name? It's Gulky. No. Gulky, Gulky from Oakland. And <laughs> we're going to Jack Gulky with, 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 with <laughs> Xbox Connect. I, I think I think the Miami Heat might have <laughs> their next. We, 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 you might want you to post that nickname, we, Xbox we, Connect. Xbox Connect. We think we just found our next. Duncan Robinson and Max Struess. Yeah, I, I tell you. Jason Caraponi. I, I mean, we've found a lot of players in Miami. He shout out to Pat Riley and everybody in the, in the, in the development firm for keep finding these players that that you don't think going to be big and they come and pop up. And these are seniors, you know. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they've been around the game for a little while. I'd like to see. I mean, I think whoever wins Purdue NC State, I'd love to see either of those teams win the title. But realistically, UConn, UConn. UConn is beating the tar out of everyone. Now, I think Edie poses a problem because he's he, he will make it difficult with the size, but they have Klingon over there on who's a big time guy. But man, I, I mean UConn's been blowing people out the building. <laughs> However, that kid Sears out of Alabama. Whoa. So, oh my God, the what? shooting performance he had in the, he couldn't make a shot in the first half. In the second half, he couldn't miss a shot. Let me, let me tell the viewers about Oh Rudy. my God. Let me, let me tell the viewers about Rudy, man. Rudy is the most annoying friend I have. He writes me, he, he literally see me in the group chat where write, he writing back and forth. He see me writing and he'll still be like, are you watching the game? Are you watching the game? Like, yeah, Rudy, leave me the fuck alone. I'm watching the game. I see what's going on. No, you're not. You're not watching it. Rudy, I just seen him hit the little crossover to the to the three jump shot and he was just on fire for the whole second half. Though. I, and he won the a, game. Oh he, definitely, oh, he definitely did that. But Rudy, did I nail all final four picks? Did you? I don't know. Did you? I know, I, you, picked, I know you picked Bama. 
And you picked Bama like a kid who picks off of colors in a book because no. you didn't see Bama play all year. I did see Bama play all year, and I know that they have the best offense. How many times did you play, see them play? Two. That's all Two. I need. Mean. And hey. you picked them to the final four with 12 loss, 11 losses. I like their offense. They have one of the top offices. They Your have the top offense. They typically don't win, and you know that. Well, now you're getting hot. And I picked NC State. I said no, be- no, you picked them after the, the, no, the, the no, I'm talking you, about you didn't I pick picked them in the beginning. I, I picked all the teams last week once we knew. Oh, the, yeah, the, you picked them from the Sweet 16. From the yes. Sweet 16, I got all you picked from the freaking beginning of this thing. No, Florida yeah. failed me. I got, I got, I got one team in there. I got you. <laughs> yeah, I got you, God. That's all I got. That, that, that was la- that lasted, but no, I, I, I thought the Bama win over at North Carolina was very impressive. It was very depressing for me as a Carolina fan, but. Very, very impressive. The kid Nelson, he played exceptionally well in that game. And then he was a basic non-factor against um, Clemson. That was the big you know, Nelson's the big man? The 6'10 white dude with yeah, the yeah. mustache. Yeah, yeah. He, hey. he was a non-factor against Clemson. You know what, Rudy? I think Steers that's, killed it. This, this, this week <laughs> of basketball made me a fan of watching college basketball next year. I'm going to be more into it next year. I think I'm going to actually know more than eight players' names before the tournament starts next year because I'm, I'm definitely going to dive into it more because this was an amazing weekend. I, I love everything about the college game this week. It gave me like the hype back in. And, you know, I, I played college ball, but once I finished, I was just was done with it. But now I think I'm would be more intrigued to watch. Make, it. make your picks. Women's tournament. Make your picks. Winning women's tournament. Uh, who's going to win each game and who's going to win the championship? SC. SC over – Whoever they play, NC State. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got Paige pulling it. No, I'm not. I'm not. Paige is pulling it off. Are I'm you, not, are we gonna, oh, we're going to bet on this one. No, I'm not betting. I'm not betting. Another, another one you're going to lose? I'm not betting. You lost the LSU one yesterday or Monday. It was yesterday, right? All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I'm going with. I'm going with. It's, uh, it's going to be a rematch of the Final Four last year. It's going to be SC versus versus um, Iowa. And SC Ooh. get their rematch, get their win back on. on and men, and men. on the men's side, I got um, shoot, UConn versus um, Purdue. And who wins? Purdue. They hit threes that game. I'm going with the upset. They're gonna right. they're going to Ed. Ed kicks it out. They hit big threes this time. They didn't shoot it well last game, but I think they'll shoot it well in the championship game. I got I got UConn beating uh, Alabama. I got Purdue beating NC State, and I agree with you. I think Purdue is going to do what Virginia did a few years back when they lost in the first round, yeah. came back the year later and won the national championship. I got Purdue, and he's going to go out like a like a hero. Yeah. Um, and uh, and in the women's side, I got Iowa winning over UConn. I think they're going to wipe the floor with UConn personally, and I think I think I see is going to stomp NC State, but. They also have a tendency to blow leads, so they could turn a twenty-two point game into a four-point game, like they did versus Indiana. And I, I, I mean, I picked Iowa from the beginning. I think Iowa's going to beat SC again. Uh, and Paige and um, Caitlin Clark's going to bust out forty again. No, 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 they won't happen. And, 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 and uh, we'll see. Uh, she did last time. The thing about um, a shooter is it, it could go yeah. off, but she could. Hey, the, uh, uh, when she go right, she she makes she's, layups. When she go left, she can pull up. It, it, she, well, she, there's, there's a tendency you saw. Maybe Don Staley, maybe Don Staley has seen it by now. I I, here's, so. the, here's, here's the thing: when, <laughs> when you when we make statements about stopping somebody, you cannot stop her. Well, it's I, like you cannot stop. Le, you can't stop LeBron. You can't stop. Steph. Can you can't stop. You can try, but you have to be convicted in your approach. Yeah, I so mean, if you're going to do something, you have to do it. You not, can't be second guessing what you're doing. Yeah. So if she hits a couple, you have to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Because if you adjust off of that, she's going to destroy you. You have to keep... And that's my opinion about any star. Because if you're going to say, Caitlin, go get yours, but no one else is scoring. What happens is when she gets hers, and she's getting people layups for twelve to fifteen assists. Yeah, then you got you got to. Then you, gotta you pick, that's it. You're done. One, you got to pick one or the other. Don't let her do both. Like so, if you want to keep her to twenty five, you need to double her all game. Yes, but you can't let get her let her get twenty assists. No like way. like like it, it's got to be one or the other. So we'll see, man. I'm excited, but uh, that's all I got, man. All right.
Don Juan, you got anything? <laughs> you tired of us. <laughs> you, woke, you wake up, you wake your I woke you up just now. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> hey, bro. Yeah, we're, we're also just entertained. We're all just so it's so riveting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Riveting here. <laughs> riveting here. It's um, not the real topic I, of the boot, to be honest. That was a big like, topic. I Only guess, one, I guess. Really. I guess you guys love hearing your own voice. But as we segue into the next topic, some exciting news came out in the National Football League today. Um, a favorite of mine, Stefan Diggs, shout out to the entire Diggs family, um, got traded from the Bills today. That wasn't shocking because we kind of expected he would be traded. But he got traded to the Texans. That's big because they had a very surprising year last year. Uh, they got Daniel Hunter from my beloved Vikings. Stefan Diggs is also a former Viking, so I like to see them reconnected, even though um, everyone's succeeding outside of Minnesota. I'm not a fan of that. But I think the Texans are going to make a move. I'm not calling them a Super Bowl pick, but I think they took a step further into their progression. And I'm going to say this is going to be a little, you know, I like to rile up these fans, Cowboys fans. They're the most exciting team in Texas. What do you guys think? Yeah, um, I'm okay with the move with the Bills, man. Uh, do you ever win with a diva receiver? Let's think about it. Terrell Owens, no. Uh, Randy Moss, no. He got close, but that's when he wasn't acting as such as of a diva. Uh, Antonio Brown, they won with him, but he was the third fiddle by that time. He wasn't the man. So, um. I think it's time that you just cut off the leg, man, and, and, and try to walk with one leg for Buffalo, man. It, it might be better if this leg is giving you so much problems. And Stephon Diggs has been giving them hella problems on the sidelines, on Twitter, in the background. And he's one of those receivers, like, you just don't like on a team. Like, you like his fire, but sometimes when you can't control that fire and it's hard to put out that flame, it, it, it burns up the whole team. So... When the receivers, like, he's one of those receivers, like, he's always saying, I'm open. So no matter what the fuck is going on, is I'm open. Like, and Josh Allen, like, well, I seen the safety right over the top of you, and I had a guy wide ass open right here. So I threw it to him. No, nah, well, that play ain't get it how I wanted to go. Throw the ball to me. And that really is not the typical way of winning football games. Sometimes it, it, it fucks up the locker room. It fucks up the quarterback mindset of his reads, and he 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 don't know where to throw the ball or who to put the ball to. And now the whole the whole situation, the whole team, the whole foundation that they built is fucked up. And it was just time. It was time to go. Time to go their way. I go my way. Let's work. It is already starting to get older. You 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 get rid of the person while he still has value. You got a second round pick out of it. You, you take that and you, and you you find somebody else, somebody who's gonna mess with your your star quarterback, and you roll from there. That's that's basically what I see. And for the Texas side of it, if if he comes there under control, I mean, for the first season, players are usually at their best. The second season, who knows, third season, they really start acting out. But if they could get something out of the first season of him being on good behavior, and then they added the DN from the Vikings, they added Mixon. Woo, there, there. I'm still not betting against Mahomes. And Lamar Jackson still got some things to prove and, and, and get some shit right over there with their offense on the receiver side. But I have the Texans third. I'm not putting them above Baltimore yet or the Chiefs. So that's why I have them third. Uh, I think this is the move that had to get done by Buffalo. Uh, the Stefan Diggs story was over up there. He is an absolute diva. And he was a crybaby a year ago, two years ago. He was a, cry, a bigger crybaby this year. He didn't perform this year. He had 13 straight games where he didn't have 100 yards, even in games where he caught balls. But he seems like I, – I, again, I, I'm not a, I don't live in Buffalo. I don't have the scoop on Buffalo. But it, I think that you could f slot receivers in with Josh Allen and he can make – and he can help. He can be successful. I think he's a great quarterback and – you give him – you, you can – like, I mean, look, Pat Mahomes just won with Dudu and Boo Boo at wide receiver. I mean, yeah, he had a great tight end, and, but – And Kaka. And, okay, Dudu, Boo Boo, and Kaka. <laughs> and, and, and that's who he had as wide receiver, and he, and he won another Super Bowl with that. I'm not saying Josh Allen is Patrick Mahomes' level, but can the Bills get back to the 
division, you know, the divisional play, round can, or the AFC championship. Yeah. Uh, I know they've lost players. That's football. You know, we know what happens. Their guys go off of a cliff real fast. It, you know, the Dolphins just picked up the Bills' safety, Hoyer. Um, I hope we get the version that played in Buffalo, not a version that is no longer good because the Dolphins have a tendency to do that, get guys when they're whoop, like that. Um, but I think it's a great move for Buffalo. Now, you have to – at this point, you have to know that if they're making that move, the relationship with him and Allen was trash, done. I mean, even – he tweeted the other day some comment – where someone said Josh Allen can do whatever without him, and he replied, you sure? Like, that's diva shit, man. I don't want that on my team at this point. For Houston, though, C.J. Stroud had a great rookie year. You have a great coach in Ryans. That's a really up-and-coming team. Could he help them that? Fr- I think you got one year out of his ass, though. I don't think he's a long-term solution there. He's 30 years old. He's not getting faster. He's not getting better. We need this whole thing where players say, I'm in my best shape. You're not. Nick, when were you in your best shape? When you were 25, not when you were 35. Hey, hey, (laughs) when my best physical ability was at 31. I I kid you not. Okay, you you didn't play college football, so you didn't have four years of getting your ass kicked in college as well. And you didn't play high school football in your junior and senior years. So you, you, you minus six years of smacks, you know, you're you were younger in your body. I think I think your peak is probably like 28, 30, 31, yeah. but but it's like it's about to fall off real soon. So you might have one and it looked like he already was kind of going He was down already going this direction. So I I mean, they got him for nothing. I mean, they got him for nothing. They, 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 I mean, they got him for a box of Skittles for Christ's sake. They're still you know? paying it. They, they got dead cap on him, so it's yeah. Like, I, you know, Buffalo really wanted to get rid of him. Oh, that, that's what that's that. what I was gonna say. If they, Buffalo, if you gave up, I think there's, there's dead cap money. Like you really wanted to get rid of his ass. He's a problem. I think they went, that, they went into more dead cap money by trading him. It could be addition by subtraction in <laughs> Buffalo. And sometimes we'll that see. work in football. People think it's just about the best. Players, it's about how well you mesh, man, and, yeah. and how much you trust in your your sidekick and, and other players to do their job. And you're coming into a, a good work environment that you want to work in and be a part of the team. So everybody think, oh, it's just about throwing players together, mixing and matching. No, this all this shit has to have to be like on one accord, bro. Because if it's not, then you're gonna lose a lot of games. And now they start questioning you, and now you start doing all the shit that you were doing back in Buffalo. And all that shit go back down the drain, bro. It's all about being cohesive in football. Matter of fact, that's any damn sport except for tennis, right? Tennis, uh, any in the, golf, golf, you know, track. That, th- those, not, the four, not, not the four by one hundred or four by four, team but sports anything else. Not always about just having the best players, man. I, I play with some great players who just weren't good in the locker room, man. You didn't want to be around them. You didn't want to play for them. They cost you by doing dumb shit. They get they get flags on them that cost you fifteen yards. They don't come to practice. On time, they they're late to meetings, things of that nature, and all that shit fucks up the whole chemistry or the vibe of things. You and you just don't win like that. You don't win like that in sports. I can tell you that one thousand percent. But hey, man, the first year, like I said, he will be on great behavior more than likely, and this is the time to take advantage of it. They have a couple of good receivers over there. Like I said, Mixon, you got uh the tight end that came from the Cowboys. Yes, yeah, Dalton Schoen, I believe. Or whatever his name is, something like that. Or it was Dalton Show my teammate? Schultz or not? So um, there you go. Dalton Show my teammate at Winnipeg. I'm sorry. Uh, so I know so, they got a tight end. I know so, they got a tight end. So, from the Cowboys. So, from the Cowboys. So, he talked he talk shit about the Cowboys. Yeah. I believe. So, they yeah. have a nice thing going, and they added that DN who, who gets like 15 sacks a year from Minnesota. So, I got nothing left. I, I mean, they, I think they got a year or two with that, and then they're looking for somebody else. But, but I think, hey, for what they got, what, what they gave for him. Give it a try. Give it up. Give it a try. That's fair. Uh, heck, Texans have nothing to lose and everything to gain in that trade. As we segue, we're going to go right into this week's uh, indifference. Rudy, hit us with your rant. What, what, what's, what's giving you pause this week in the sports world, sports and entertainment world? What, what's giving you pause this week? Mm-hmm. Well, you know... Uh, got a lot of things I like to talk about, but can I can I guess I, it? 
Uh, uh, sure, yes. Are you going into Angel Reese post game? No. Oh, okay, okay. No. no. Oh. I'll save. I'll save that for the end. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have a pro. I have a problem with liars. I have a problem with people who tell bullshit. I covered college sports for over a decade. So I know the schedules for pregame, halftime, postgame. They provide these schedules. They tell you when teams are on the field. They tell you when uh, or on the court. They tell you when they're supposed to come out. Like, you know this as a former college basketball player. There's a schedule, okay? Kim Mulkey's a fucking liar. And her lying about why they weren't on the court for the national anthem in a regional final game is an absolute embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. Now, let me stop for a second. I'm going to say something in po- positive on her behalf. There was an article written by the LA Times where they, a writer who obviously is cheering for UCLA before the UCLA game, did an article where he compared the LSU women's team, called them dirty debutantes. I had no idea what the fucking hell that meant. I had no clue because I I know what a debutante is. I don't know what a dirty one is. I, I you know, and she says, look it up. It was sexist, blah, blah, blah. She was a thousand percent right. Um, and they compared it to UCLA, who was milk and cookies. So it's good versus evil, bad, good guy versus bad guy, villain and all that shit. However, when you Google der- dirty debutantes, what's the first link that pops up? Porn. I don't know if you guys know that. But it's porn. Like I'm talking to myself on two black screens right now. <laughs> oh wow! Um, I'm, I'm that Rudy. I'm sorry. You know I got this porn. little code going on, so I don't okay. want everybody okay. to see that. I'm all sorry. Right. But, it's porn. but it's porn. So if you Google "dirty debutantes," all the links are porn sites. Hey. That's that's despicable. And I, but I'm I'm gonna sit here and say that I I doubt this old white guy from L.A. had any idea that the fir- the, the, the entire page as Google Nick Google's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Had any I I have I I don't think he had any idea that that's what would come up on a Google search for 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 that term. However, that's what it was. The LA Times apologized. He apologized. They even edited the story out. That said, she was a thousand percent right in that case. In this case, though, where she's sitting here lying in the post game press conference about why her team was not on the floor during a national anthem of a regional final game, bro. Yeah, you see it, right? Um, That is like sitting... Can you imagine an NBA team is not on the floor for the national anthem of a playoff game? Okay, Nick, enough already. Uh, (laughs) But but can you imagine an NBA team's on the floor for for a playoff game and the national anthem? They're on the floor for the national anthem all the time. Why is it that this woman sits here and lies and says, well, I had no idea when it was played. I didn't even know when the national anthem was sung. Bro, that's a lie. I've been in I've been in multiple or ever I've been in many arenas. I've been there as media member. I've been there as a fan. I've been in the seats. I've been in the concession stands. I've been under the building doing getting ready for a game. Various things. There's a schedule given to the media. The coaches have that schedule. They Rudy. know exactly when everything is being done. Rudy. She's lying. Rudy. She flat lied, and it's disgusting because it's a horrible fucking example. Just say the truth. Your girls don't want to be out there for the national anthem. Because if that's what it is, just say it. But you're lying. You look stupid. Flat out, what you just described is mad disrespectful. Because whether you believe in the country or you don't believe in the country, there's certain etiquette, and there's no WNBA team that's going to be in the locker room during the national anthem. So get used to being a fucking adult for a second and stop being a fucking diva and lying about shit and start teaching your players some level of respect and decorum. There's so many things that are going with LSU's basketball program that are absolutely despicable. Whether it's the nonstop, nonstop fucking taunting that they do, there's trash talking. Trash talking, I'm cool with that. There's taunting, though. There's mad taunting. Oh. And, it, and it, nah, nah, I know you, you, you want to be fake with it, Nick. There's, they do shit that if men did that to men, there'd be fist fights. A lot of fist fights. Uh, men do that to men all the no, time. They Rudy. Don't. No, they do yes, not. They you will a- never sit here outside of Draymond Green. Players do not do what the LSU basketball team does. And I attribute that to their coach because she's the worst of all. She's a liar 
and she says shit, and she flat out says, I didn't know. And you know what? That's uh, a lie. Louisiana, she said it. No, I said, no, no, I said that's a lie because a, it's, it, it's literally, I play professional sports and I play sports, you know. It's, 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 it's right on the fucking, it's right on the fucking walls as all throughout the locker room just so you can know, okay, damn, I got five minutes before this, 10 minutes before this, 10 minutes before this. So you fucking know. That's a fucking so, lie. So the true story is that a reporter from the Baton Rouge newspaper, Chelsea Bush, from the Baton Rouge op- uh, Open, or what is it? I don't know what that says. I can't read my own handwriting. She said, I've covered this team for three years. They're never on the floor during a national anthem. Ever. Ever. In fact, the eight associate AD for LSU, Cody Worsham, clarifies and says, it is a procedure program-wide with the men also leaving the court for the national anthem. So what you have as a school is the most disrespectful school from the athletic director down. It's a, it's unbelievably disrespectful. Show some fucking decorum, and I'm sure people will blast me and say, fuck it, I don't care about the national anthem. Well, you know what? Fuck you too. Because at some point, there's some level of decorum that you should instill in athletes who want to be pros enough of this damn shit where you sit here and lie about stuff and think people are dumb i'm not dumb you're not dumb and you're and i've been in the locker room and i can hear it playing she lies no she lies and she wants people to feel sorry for her the you, whole the I whole, the whole nas- the whole national anthem thing if you don't stand do it stand on business i don't care if, if you out there or not you you have a thing for it where you think that you definitely have to be out there I'm on the well, other... I don't even. I don't even think uh, they should play it. Quite frankly, because uh, half the people in the building disrespect it. So, so, so it should be. But, but, but if, dude, if so, you're if they play it, you are required to be out there. No, I don't, I don't think, give I a don't shit. Think, I don't think you have to even, be quiet. Even the concession stands stop in every arena during the national anthem. I don't think you have to be required to be out there for it. I, if you if you choose to do it, you choose not to. It, it's all good. It, I don't mind either way. Do your thing. Mm-hmm. Come out there and play. I came here to see you play basketball, Rudy. I didn't come here to see you play basketball. You know what? I didn't come, you know I didn't come, here, to, I didn't come here. I didn't come here to see if you stand up for the anthem or not. That's not what I came here for. That's a whole different political thing that we're getting into. The whole No, we're not going to political thing because because it's, there's it's, something uh, there's something there's something called respect. When you were a kid in when you were a kid in school, did you have to stand to greet your principal? Yes. I did in my school. Maybe your school didn't, but I'm I pretty sure. I you, I'm I pretty don't. sure it did. Because in every school, as I, I, my mom was a teacher for 33 years. We never had. Any time the principal walked into the classroom, the kids in the classroom I'm talking about elementary school kids, I, not I, fucking high school kids. I, I don't remember that shit, Rudy. You don't Be remember honest. because you don't remember high school because you were high the whole time. I know. I, um, no, I, I never did. I never did any of that stuff till I never did any of that. You had to stand and greet your principal. Rudy. You, you, it's a respect thing. We have no respect in this fucking country. I get that. Respecting the cut in this country as a whole is gone. But you have a liar for a leader. She's a liar. And she can sit here and make up a bullshit excuse and say, I didn't even know. Bullshit. You've been doing it all year. Yeah, you, have I, a routine, I, you have a routine. So your routine is to disrespect. So I that, have... gives, that gives me, that makes you understand why that program is how that program is. So, that makes you understand why those players are how they are. Because it starts from their leader. Their leader's a piece of shit. Then, their leader's a liar. She might be a great fucking coach. She is a great coach. Even though they, she didn't do, I don't think she did the greatest job against Iowa, she's a great coach. But she, but man, oh, and that hit piece that never came out, it wasn't a hit piece. It was a profile about how miserable she was. Yeah. So I wonder if she's going to retract her, I'm going to hire the lawyer, blah, blah, blah. Get the fuck out of here. You're a miserable person. We know this. We know this. You're miserable. You hold grudges against everyone that's ever said no to you in your life. The word no for you makes you hate people. Guess what? And you're teaching your players that the word no is a bad word. And and you know what? It's no wonder her older players fucking hate her guts. Angel Reese didn't leave this program to go declare for the NBA draft because she's ready. You she left she, because she can't stand her coach. I don't think that. I think she actually likes she her coach. She was suspended by that coach for four fucking games. Yeah, she yeah, was suspended as the captain of a team. We, of the, as the captain of the team. She 
was suspended. But we don't know what happened else. It I know what happened. happened. I've, it, I've, read, I've read so many things on what. It, it could have been so ever. much worse, and she probably saved her. Probably. Damn bullshit. Probably. Saved her. Saved and her. She comes to Angel the Fist a lot. On, she shits on her. She comes to Angel the a lot. All right, man. But really, hold on, hold on, hold on. I heard that the Yukon and I heard that the Yukon and uh USC um didn't come out for the anthem either. Is that true? I don't know. I I, I don't know. Oh, I, I have no idea. The, I, so, I don't know. So, so if they didn't, how would you feel about that? Is it or it's just because she if lied? They both, because if they she both lied. Didn't, because you're lying about it. Okay. If they both didn't do it, then that's that's they're okay. both not there. Okay. But if one team is out there, and I, again, it's not required in college basketball. Yeah. Because we don't require college kids to do anything. Because God forbid you require a college athlete to act like a fucking adult, for which they are adults, making millions of dollars now. Because when they go to the next level, they don't have the option. They don't have the option. You're out there. I've watched LeBron James at his son's games sit on the bench while the anthem is playing. But when he's, which mean, which I'm sure he'd want to do, want to do. In the NBA too, but when they play, he's out there, and he's standing. This is part of your job when you go into WNBA. We have to remember that you're training people to become adults, or I'm sorry, they're already adults. Train them to be good adults. People have definitions of that, and I think the one thing that we have as we've lost in the society is the most basic form of respect. The most basic form of respect that I talked about last week, where if I threw my fucking watch in your face on the street, you'd punch me in my fucking mouth. But, I, and, but if and, I did, but if I'm a 22 year old football player and I do it to the head coach of another football team, and he can't do anything because the only person that will have a problem if he does that is the coach. This is what I'm. It's just a basic form. <laughs> Of respect and rivalry okay. games in rivalry games uh, and just to the Bullshit. point of that one, in rivalry games, it, get, it get a lot. It gets Have you heated. ever one time, Nick? Ever one time seen a player, any player, during a co head coach, head coach shaking hands at the end of the game, go into the face of the head coach of the other team but, while it's being done? The answer is no. No, but You've that, never that. seen. And I never, and most coaches don't have their son playing for that team. Exactly, also. and so, that fucking guy won't so, fucking set his kid straight for so once in his it's, life. It's a lot more. It's ask, a lot more into it. It's a lot yeah, more. Into yeah, it. I know. He's an enabler. He's, he's enabled this year. You're kid. playing for your dad. Your dad. Yeah. You feel like your dad's being disrespected. You, you're gonna disrespect you, the other person. You don't, no, you don't, because your dad should have fucking sense to tell you that you don't do that. You, you, it's a football game. Yeah, and it's, it's a football, football game. game. And, and, he dis and he didn't disrespect him. And he said he's. He's building a team the wrong goddamn way. And, and a whole cutting bunch, 65 players. And a whole that kind of was disrespectful to go and talk about somebody else's team that has nothing to do with you. They all do it every fucking game. Nick, you know who talks shit about Deion Sanders? Nick Saban. Did Shador <laughs> Sanders go to Nick Saban and flash a watch in his face? I, Fuck no. Yes. No, he did not. He should. No, he did they not. Play no, he should. He, he didn't yeah. play against him. All right, all right, boss, man. You, you know I'm that's just, bullshit. I'm just saying, I'm just saying in the, that's bullshit. I'm just saying in the, in the, in the, long as they're, long as they're not touching each other and, and hitting anybody or punching anybody. All right, it, it, all right, all right, if, I, if I show you my watch, okay, whatever, whatever. Oh, oh, but remember, remember when you said it was okay to flex? It was a problem when that girl flexed on Flage and she touched no, that no, girl. No, there are consequences. And you had a problem. You had a problem with Camila Cardozo. Body slamming fucking no, flashing. No, I said Keep uh, your mind. There's consequences that come with it. They're, they're, yeah. And you know what, 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 what was the what was the consequence that happened with Shadur Sanders with fucking deep with that situation? None. Yeah, I mean You know, you know, you, you know my bet right now, and I'll put I'll put a hundred on it right now. And I'll and I'll hold on it. Shador Sanders is going to the Dallas Cowboys. No way. Deion Sanders will be coaching the Dallas Cowboys in two years next year. No way. He will be on the staff. No way. Mark it down. All right. I'll bet you hundred bucks. I take hundred bucks. I take that bet. He'll be on the Dallas staff next year because he wants to dictate where his son goes. You said head coach. Gonna... I said head coach on okay. the staff. Okay. He'll be on the staff because no that kid has never been coached by anyone but his dad. No way. All right, man. I take that bet. bet you're here. a professional. You're a professional football player. Bet if the shit, if the shit that he does in college is done in a, an NFL locker room. The captain of that football team will split his shit. Yeah, that's, that's up to them. You know, yeah, that's up to him. You're right. It's up he's to never them. experienced that. 
Because he's never been checked in his life as a been, football he's player. He's been a leader of the team. He's been cut. No, he's been coddled by his daddy. That too. But I left the fucking topic. Kim Mulkey, mm-hmm. you're a fucking liar. Do better. Be better. Because you know what? We're not dumb. I'm out. All right. Oh. <laughs> Things took a, a left political turn there. Uh, we're going to leave that out there. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, guys, I know you guys are super excited. I don't like to force things. So uh, for the fans, please don't cry. This week, I don't have a Don's Dimes. Whoa. What we're, we're, we're going to do, what we're going to do is uh, save something for the end of the episode where I chime in because I know you guys love to hear from me. I just don't like Ooh. to force it. Uh, the creativity just didn't, I didn't get sparked this week. And I just don't want to hit you guys with nothing. I know you guys are, you know, clamoring for it. Oh my God, Don, give me a dime. I know you guys I was, are looking I was ready to kill Shohei yeah. Otani today. God, Don. Um, so yeah, we're not going to do that. What oh, Yankees do, are six and one, it. bro. Okay. Okay. Rudy, we've heard uh, a lot from you. Uh, so <laughs> oh, wow. We're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna go right into uh, piggyback off uh, your gambling on a hundred dollars and go right into Nick's uh, uh, picks. Like what, what picks do you have this week for us? Man, Nick? How did, how did I do last week? I think I was you <laughs> one, you <laughs> one game, dude. I picked two games. You didn't go in like that. I think, I think you two, had two two picks. Two, and if you made those two picks, that's what you'd have had. I don't oh, know. I lost $10? money because I the last week $10? before you did six and I lost. Well, I, you only supposed to put like five dollars on that parlay. Come on, that was a six teamer. Come on. So last week it was a two teamer, and they both won. I picked NC State and I picked Alabama. Okay, what'd yeah. you win? I don't like to talk about a little flexibility that I be doing. With, you know, I ain't gonna shador y'all. You won thirteen dollars. But... You won thirteen dollars. Relax. <laughs> All right. You won thirteen dollars. Relax. Uh, this week we're going. Uh, we're going. Let's go back to the NBA. I love it. I I am a basketball person. I love the the. I love basketball. I love the sport. But I'm gonna mix and match it a little bit. I'm going to go with the Miami Heat in the showdown over the 76ers. We're money line in that one. Where are they playing? Where are they playing? In Miami. Okay, you know when B came back yesterday. I know he came back. He, who, who's his kryptonite? Who, who handled him all the time? Look, 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 look like he would have died on that court yesterday. Yeah, exactly. That's why we're catching him while he still is a little bit unconditioned. And he's unconditioned, so, you know, he's not in condition, peak condition. This is where we catch them, and we need this game. Uh, another big game, we got the Warriors over the Rockets. Take the points, Warriors. They're playing well. They need that game. It's a big one right now. Um, that game basically shores up if they get the 10th seed or not. And then last but not least, we're going with the, the Knicks over the Kings as an upset. The Knicks need a win. The Kings are struggling. They're missing Herder. They're missing Monk. Those would be my three picks for Friday night. Picking while, while Nick is hot. Um, I think I gave you a pretty good reason. All of those would be money lines. Don't don't take the points. Just go money line on those. Nice little three-teamer. Come up on a little something-something. You're rolling with Nick this week again. Hope none of you guys lose any money. As we said before, uh, Nick's picks are not a reflection of Come On Now, the podcast. If you lose any of your money and you can't pay your mortgage, you're going to have to lie to your girlfriend or wife. But if you win. If you win, should they cash app you? You should still lie. My cash app is better, better, better 3,000. I don't even know what that means, but okay. I don't I, I don't even know what that means, but we're gonna we're gonna get off that and we're gonna go to uh my favorite topic to discuss, the association. There are so many amazing I don't think anybody has better storylines than the association. Shout out to Adam Silver, shout out to everyone that's doing stuff. Um my favorite player, top five Tatum, is playing right now. Shout out to Boston Celtics. Uh my Bulls are in the playoff hunt. Shocking. Don't know how we did that. But um we're gonna discuss uh Pretenders and contenders for the NBA playoffs. Who do you guys uh, have as pretenders and contenders? I'm actually super excited to hear about your take on this one because uh, I really, the start of the season, I automatically had Denver as a lock. Now I don't really feel that way. I don't, I don't really feel like as a lock. 
Now, if they win it, I'm not going to be shocked. Okay. But like a clear cut lock, I don't have Denver as the clear cut lock anymore. So, yeah, what do you guys think, man? Go in. Uh, just read out some teams, and we'll tell you if they're contenders or pretenders. I think we're having some. No, no, bitch. I'm not going to read out teams. Who do you like? We want you to read out teams, and then we're going to tell you if they're pretenders or contenders. As simple as that, Donald. We, we didn't discuss that in pre-production. Now no. you have us arguing in front of the family. You have us <laughs> arguing in front of the family. All right, all right, this Rudy. is ridiculous. I'm, 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 that. All Denver. Right, Denver, let's no, start no, with no, Denver. No, 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 Rudy. No, no, that's not, no we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. That's what we, that's what we talked about. That's what, we that's what we talked about. That's what we talked I love about. That you guys discussed that, but you didn't discuss it with the executive. Well, well you know what? we're going we're gonna to discuss. We're going to discuss. We're going to discuss. How do you guys feel about the Dallas Mavericks? Uh, pretenders. They're, Pretend, uh, pretenders. Go ahead, pretenders. Uh, their defense, their liabilities. Um, they they won't be able to get stops. They will make a great, a great. They'll make for a great TV each series they play. It will be live. You'll get to see Kyrie dominate the ball. You get to see Luca dominate the ball. But at the end of the day, they don't have enough. Uh, their bench isn't deep enough. Uh, they're they're just not enough. It, it, they they won't be able to compete in a full. Series. Will they be able to 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 take a a team that you don't think they'll be able to beat and beat that team for one series, but I don't think they could do it three to four series to get to the championship or win a championship. No way. They can't sustain They're, They could they could have a series that they go 4-3 and they can have a series that get swept in. Defensively, they're terrible, and their their best player is an awful defensive player. Second best player is an awful defensive player. I, I don't see them getting out of the first round. But they do have the firepower to they can score to, all day, but yeah. they, can't, they can't defend anybody, so... I don't see them. I don't even care who they play in the first round. They're not going to get out of the first round. Whoa! You don't care who they play. Don't care. They're going to okay. play as two or three seed. No, they're playing. They're at the five seed right now. Are they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're at five. They're. Well, they're they're, they're at five. They're like they're, a half game from six or eight. At this will be, point. Right now, they'll be playing the Clippers. Oh shit! Yeah, they might be, the yeah. Falling apart. Yeah. Okay. If they if they're at five seed, and they're playing the Clippers, then. They can win that series, but they're actually tied with the Pelicans. They're a game up on the Kings and the Suns. They're literally a game from being the eight seed. So we'll see in a week. Okay. But they're still a pretender. <laughs> pretender. I agree. All right. What about your beloved Miami Heat? Uh, the Miami Heat are, damn it. Lord have mercy. The, the, Heat have mercy. the Heat are contenders. And the Heat are contenders for one reason, Jimmy Butler. If Jimmy Butler turns it on like he's turned it on every single every single playoff except for the one we and we've been there for what, four years with Jimmy now the sweet it, he's he's turned the one year where we got swept and actually we won that game and lost the buzzer which I, I think, think the basically first game ended, threw away the whole it, series it, it changed the whole series it, it, Jimmy Butler plays like Jimmy Butler can play because I think uh, uh what's his name uh, Josh Hart said that J- Jimmy Butler's on some side missions and stuff right now and now he's going to be focused on the real mission he he changes. You you see a guy who's basically coast through the regular season. I, I think they're contenders. Do I think they're gonna go to the finals? No, but I think they're a legitimate contender. And I, that's a flawed statement because I've actually said in the past that you're not a contender if you can't go to the finals. So I lied. They can go to the finals. I don't think they will. That's okay. a, I have to fix what I said. Okay. I think they can, but I don't think they will. I think Boston's the best team in the East, and I don't think it's close. I think they can give Boston a hell of a run. The right break here and there. Maybe Jason Tatum's ankle turns to the left again. Um, you know, yeah. but I think that I think they're the only contender in the East besides Boston. Wow. No, I'm I'm a, I'm a good with Rudy. They're contenders. Um, <clears throat> and I didn't believe that a week or two ago, but with the emergence of Terry Rozier lately, he's been balling. He's been hitting threes. He's been hitting seven, eight threes. Coming back, he's been a consistent person that I think that Jimmy will be able to rely on. For offense in the playoffs, as a second fiddle more than Bam, Bam just is as consistent in the playoffs, and we don't know how if that will ever change. He had he draws a lot of the best assignments on switches and things in that nature. So I would prefer for him to be the leader on defense and and anchor that shit and let somebody else be that second fiddle offensively. Damn, I forgot about Tyler Hero on that team. Shit. Uh, yeah, I guess not. So uh, with Terry Rozier, maybe you get. Hero back and he comes off the Everyone bench. Everyone forgot about Tyler Hero. If he comes off, if he comes back and he comes off the bench, that changes the dynamic for the Miami Heat because he's Hero, way Hero, better. Hero, as Hero's off- not playing. Hero ain't playing this year. He's done. All right. Well, they're still contenders. With Terry Rozier stepping up, 
Yeah, I, I think they match up well against everybody else in the East. Um, I think Boston will give them a tough time, but they can beat them. They showed that before, even when Boston has the better team. Um, something about Jimmy and those guys just about playing Boston, they get up for that series. So, yeah, contenders. Hey, uh, I'm going to throw you throw a doozy out there. Ready? Contenders. Lakers, they are contenders. <laughs> yep, I knew you were going there. Were, were you going to say that? I was. I was. I was going to say Lakers. I was. <laughs> I was. I was. I was. Nah, anything can happen. That will give oh, them. Loses. Whoever loses. Who loses out of seven and eight, and then that will give them more than likely Denver. But if Denver falls, the Lakers are contenders? No? I can't say it like that? Fuck it. Damn. The Lakers are not contenders, man. They they have enough, but I just think that Denver is the runaway favorites out there in the West. I, it's not because of the fault of the Lakers. I just think the only – the only team out there is Denver, so that's why. They're pretenders. They suck. Let's stop this. Move they on. suck. How do they suck? They suck. They had a nice little hot streak now. They're pretenders. They, they they got the – I mean, God, they had a road trip right now where it's the easiest – I mean, my God, if you could have scripted a six-game road trip at the end of the season better than this one, they got, like, the six worst teams in the East on this road trip. Yeah. It's insane. Like, the Heat will go get a road trip, and it's the six best teams in the West. But they, the Lakers get a – I mean, it's almost like the NBA scripts it to give the Lakers the easiest chance at the end of the season but, to win games. But you know they play, and, the, you know they play the same teams throughout, early in the year. It's just – Great. Eventually, they're, playing, they're, they're playing – I mean, look, you, you see who they're playing right but now. But everybody playing, plays like, those first, teams. I know, but when you play them at certain times of a season – with with but, things on the like, line, if they were playing the Knicks, the Bucks, the Heat, the 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 Celtics, right now instead of the Wizards, the Raptors, the the Pacers, the Hawks, they, the Pacers, the Hornets, are good. and they lost that game. Yeah, you, you know, it, it, it's almost like a script for the Lakers. But I don't think they're beating anyone. I don't think they'd be anybody in the first round of the playoffs if they beat the Warriors can, can, and then beat the loser of the Kings or the Suns to get to the eighth seed because the Nuggets will whoop their ass. Can I, can I say they're contenders if they beat anybody else besides Denver? I think there'll be anybody else besides Denver. I don't think they beat anybody else besides Denver, and I'll bet you on that one too whenever it happens. Hmm. But they won't make the playoffs because right, right. Steph is going to send his ass home. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, this is actually my favorite team to watch right now. <laughs> Minnesota Timberwolves. They're contenders. Uh, they're absolutely contenders. They're they're playing great. In fact, they're playing they're playing way better than I thought they'd play without Carl and Anthony Towns. They're they they kind of stumbled the first few games when he when he got hurt, but they're a half game out of the number one seed. And <clears throat> whether they get the one seed or not, I mean their 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 two seven matchup could be the Kings. It's a great matchup for them. The two the, or the three six with the Pelicans, great matchup. For, I, I I think they're absolutely contenders. I, I, Anthony, we had this topic last week. If Anthony Edwards wins an NBA championship this year, Anthony Edwards is the face of the NBA. Yeah, he's the face of the league. So he has, the most, so he has the most to benefit the, from winning oh the championship. He's twenty he's three years old. No, I said, well, again, no. He, the topic was who benefits the most, and I still think Jason Tatum benefits the most because he's a fucking Boston hero if he wins this year. But and it changes his everyone's opinion of him. Anthony Edwards is a uh, outside of the outside of the skills competition, he's a yeah. dog. Yeah. And I I mean he's played exceptionally well. And I I, I think I want I hope Towns gets back. I want to see them at full strength. But it's pretty fucking remarkable what they're doing there. Yeah, they 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 don't need towels for for <clears throat> healthy for me to put them in the contender realm. I know they've been playing nice and good, nice and well without without them without them because they their defense travels, their defense go everywhere wherever they go. On the road, home game, their defense is there. So one thing when you can rely on your defense, you're always in it. You always give yourself a chance. So that puts them in the contender atmosphere. But if Carl Anthony Towns isn't there. I don't think they just have enough firepower to to, to sustain a, a playoff series when it gets when it gets like serious when defenses are locked in on you. They get more time to game plan, scheme you, and knock you out of things that you love to do. So they need Carl Anthony Towns. He stretches the floor. He can shoot the ball. I know he hasn't had great playoffs, but 
now that he's not the man, usually every other time he's the man in the playoffs, he could be like second fiddle to AE and, and, and he could probably thrive in that in that role better. So if he's back healthy, contenders. To leave with the last team, and it's going to be a little bit controversial. And I'm, I'm expecting you guys to have a lot to say. The Los Angeles Clippers. Pretenders or contenders? Uh, you mean Rudy T that could win a championship uh, a month yeah. ago? Yeah, a, mu- a month ago. Yeah, was it a month? It was a month and a- it was a month ago or was it a month and a half ago? Now? Maybe, I, yeah. maybe a month and a half ago. Yeah, but no, I know they're, I can. They're, 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 they're toast. They're toast. <laughs> they're toast. Their own coach called them soft last week. Maybe that was to inspire them. But yeah, this is not the same team that I talked about six weeks ago when they had gone like twenty five and five over thirty. Like this is they have completely fallen apart. Um. Yeah, they're 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 pretenders. That's, they're yeah. not gonna get the they're not gonna get out of the first round. Yeah, they're definitely pretenders. Um, it starts with um, their point guard, you know, and I trust him as much as I trust him in a uh, Houston strip club, and that's not very much. Um, they're Paul George and him is just a bad combination of people. I w- I would trust. I like told y'all before. They are not playoff players that in prime time when I need them to make big buckets um, or just carry the team or just be somebody as an outlet for Kawhi that I'm going to rely on. They've been playing soft. They haven't been getting things done. And they're one of the deepest teams in the league. So it's not about talent. They just can't put it together. They just don't mesh completely well together or they just don't have the dog in them. Some people have the dog in them and they just kind of meow their way around. So uh, those are team people. I'm not gonna. I'm not putting any trust in those guys to be contenders. They they fell off. Ty Lue tried to work his magic. He's trying to light a fire under them, but you can't light a fire under something that has no fuel, unless it's the Stone Age. You're scrubbing wood to, to make it. And, 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 no way, Jose. No way. Agreed. Milwaukee okay. Bucks. Yeah, that was the last one. The Clippers were the last one, he said. Okay. <laughs> that was the last one, but since you want to bring it up, Milwaukee Bucks, what do you think? Contenders. You know why they're contenders? Because they have two of the top 12 players in the league. Another team that have two of the top 12 players in the league, they're always going to have a chance. They have a chance to play. And we don't – and you know why? Because we don't trust in, in Tatum. As much as we – as much as you trust Tatum. Against Milwaukee? Yeah. But oh, but not against Miami or against Milwaukee. Period. Yeah, no, we don't, tr- we don't against Miami. Not as much. Tatum still has a lot to prove. And I, we... I think against Miami, the guy that's our kryptonite is Jalen Brown. Of course, he's always been when he tonight. when he balls, it's over. we lose. It's over every freaking time because Tatum's numbers are basically the same almost all the time. Twenty five. He never – he's had one big game against us, like, in his entire career. He's usually, like, 5 for 18, too. Some yeah, and his shooting – he's never he's never going, like, 6 to, like, 12 for 18. He's going, like, 8 for 18 or 7 for 18. But Jalen so, Yeah, Brown is the guy that always scares the crap. I mean, I already said that before. I think Brown is their best player, but, you know, uh, I – Go ahead. I, it, against Milwaukee? It, no, I don't. Ha- I don't have any fear for him against Milwaukee, but against Miami, yeah. I, I still got to go with two of the. You know, Giannis is the top three player in the league. Dame is still around 12, 13, 14 ish, um, and Dame ha- he, he's had he hasn't had his best year, but he's still Dame. He still can hit the big shots. He still can hit the big threes. He still can get his shots. You know, pretty well. Twenty five a game, shooting. You know, his lowest percentage from three, but. We're still, you know, you're still worried about him. You come across half court line, you're still worried about him. Um, and they have a well team. Middleton has to step up and be that guy again. Porter, Portis is, is always big, energy guy. And I think the difference between them now, they can play him more than Brooke Lopez when they need play against teams that, you know, run that pick and roll and Brooke does that, you know, that drop that they usually do when they get hurt on sometimes. So uh, they're definitely contenders, man. They still got the firepower, enough firepower to, to win series. Will they be able to find enough defensively? That will be the thing that we need to see. They haven't been so bad after the All-Star break. They're like 12-6. and six, But they have some bad losses. Yeah, they're like 12-6. and six. Yeah, after the All-Star break. No. 12-7? and seven? 
Dog. No, remember they went on a big bro. Win streak. He, he got hired at the break. No. Like right before the break. Right before the break. They're I said seven, after the All-Star break. Well, they're 17 and 15 since he became the head coach. Yeah, but after the All-Star break, they're like 12 and 6. Uh, I watched them lose two games to the Lakers <laughs> with the lead in both they in the al- last minute of the game. They always lose to the Lakers. I don't know. Something I, about I, I watched them lose both. They're they're hell. They're one and three. One and three in their last four. Three and three. Four and four. Five and five. Six and six. Yeah. Seven and seven. They're seven and seven in their last fourteen. So they're twelve. So they're twelve and seven. And before that, they had won six straight. Yeah. So that would make them thirteen and seven. Yeah. Something like that. Um. But, yeah, I think they're pretenders. Uh, Dame is not the same guy that he was in Portland. I think this is somewhat similar to the situation you had in Miami when neither guy wanted to decide who the guy really was in that first year. I just don't think there will be a second year because I think the guy is absolutely fucking miserable. (laughs) And he's voiced it. And I think misery and and, and I think how you feel emotionally with this generation of athlete, this generation of athlete, is like their emotions at home affect how they play basketball, which to me is absolutely ridiculous, but it does with these guys. And you heard him complain multiple times this year. He's having the worst shooting season of his career, 42.6%. He's shooting under 36% from three. He's not that guy this year. He's averaging 20 24.4. 24.4. I expected his points per game to go down, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect it to that's, almost fall. It's almost fallen off a cliff. No, no. The thing, the thing about it is, we thought his shoot, we thought his shooting percentage would have been a lot higher this year. Exactly, and wide open, he, right? He should be, you know, with free. But I, he uh, is forty-eight. He's just missing. I'm thinking forty-eight percent from the field. You know, a career high in that percent in that wise, and I think like. 41 from three point would be, you know, a good thing for him because I think he should be getting better looks playing with Freak. Because it's either you're going to play hard on Freak or you're going to play, you can't do both. Like, the, looks are there. the looks are there, though. So that's why I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, but he's been playing better. He's, he's been he shooting better. 42.6% is 42.6%. And if he was shooting 48%, he'd be averaging 29 a game or 30 a game. Yeah. He's shooting like shit this year. It, there's something not right with him, and I don't believe they have. Middleton is a shell of what he was. Yeah. Even 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 Lopez has not, not been. That's why I said. That's why I said. He's been in the that's past. why I said. Like, BP has to be that guy who steps up. And I love BP. I, I want to be. I want to. He's a dirty dog player. He's not a guy that you have to. You're going to expect to be a twenty point game. No, guy. I'm, but he'll give you fifteen and twelve easily. He doesn't. What he doesn't have, he averages thirteen and seven. But but he has nights. Now he's gonna be fifteen and twelve. No, I'm saying he has nights where he does fifteen and twelve pretty easily. Rudy, you don't have the ability to have nights. You need to have it be a consistent no, basis in the playoffs. I, I need him to be the third or fourth player. I don't need him to have be that great all the time. I need occasionally to him pop out and have a twenty four. If they if they play the Heat in the first round, they're going home in the first round. I would hope so. I would hope. I'm so. hoping so. I have no doubt. I don't think the I, I I would have zero doubt. Well, we we probably won't play them. Last year I had doubt. This year I have no doubt that if we I'd like to not play them in the first round because I like someone else to beat them first and get an easier matchup. Give me Cleveland, but Cleveland or New me, York. Give me, Cle, give me Cleveland or the Knicks. Yeah, I, I'll take the Cleveland Knicks all day. Yeah, are the Knicks? All right, well, I'm sorry. No, we're done. We, yeah, go we're ahead. Done. We got babies in the background <laughs> crying. I don't know what's going on. Really? Um, Is that yours, Nick? That being said, I mean you're muted, so we have no clue what you're saying. Um, with that being said, we're gonna go right into. Uh, My kid want to be on the podcast corner. so bad, so bad. Uh, combat corner, Rudy, give us off. Combat corner, real quick. It, this is a quick one. Um, there wasn't a whole lot last week, and we had the BKFC John Dodson um, fight in BKFC. Great fight, draw. <laughs> Belt did not change hands. Fun fight to watch. He got dropped twice. But the Aguero who he uh, who he fought fifth round didn't fight, and he basically gave the the fight away. Um, so yeah, a five round draw. They're gonna fight again, probably in Miami in a, in a few months. I think in June is when they're supposed to be back here, and I believe they're gonna fight in Miami. UFC uh, fight night in Atlantic City, very uninspired event. Uh, Fior whipped Aaron Blanchfield. I think completely turned the division around because Blanchfield's been getting that massive UFC push. 
and you know what that push is, Donald. Like they're priming her to be the next one, and yeah. she got her ass kicked. <laughs> she got her ass kicked. So um, that and the fight was terrible. The fight that pops that 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 I want to talk about real fast is the fight with Chris Weidman. Chris Weidman fought Bruno Silva. He was winning. He won the first two rounds. And then in the third, there had been a number of eye pokes in that fight. I felt like I was watching John Jones because Weidman poked this guy in the eye three times in the first two rounds. And in the third round, did you see the fight, Donald? I've never seen this happen, actually. He poked him in both eyes on the same punch. Because he went out, it's like he punched, and then he opened his hand. It was like jab, jab into both eyes and the guy basically turtled up because he got poked in both eyes and they he Wyman ended up pounding him out and the referee misses it and initially they, they, they made it a TKO knockout TKO victory but then they went and looked at the video and saw that he jabbed him in both eyes and this is a problem I have with 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 the, with UF MMA and the U, any, any MMA period if you have rules on eye pokes, start enforcing them because Chris Weidman should have had points deducted. And the guy lost the fight because he got poked in the eye over and over. And Weidman fought pretty well. He looked okay. But Weidman then tells the guy, they, they changed it to a decision, unanimous decision the, um, on the cards. But Weidman tells Silva, yeah, my recommendation is that you don't go to the ground if you get poked in the eye. What? You stabbed him in both eyes at the same damn time. What exactly is he supposed to do? We need to start enforcing rules in MMA. If you if eye pokes are illegal, you get one warning, the next one's a point. Cage grabs. You grab the cage once, you get one warning, the next one's a point. The rules in MMA are not enforced. And you have guys being stabbed in the eye four times in a fight, and not one point was deducted. You can't keep calling it incidental or accidental. I do not care. If Draymond Green kicks a guy in the balls, it may very well be incidental. But is he still going to get a technical foul? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, and by the way, Draymond Green's losing his goddamn mind. He needs a therapist. Oh, <laughs> man. I'll put the Oh, I'll put my God. But, it, it, again, it, you have to enforce rules because – it affected this guy. His eyes were swollen. I mean, what do, you, what do you want? So, yeah, I was I was happy to see Weidman. I wanted to see him win. I'm happy he won because I like him. But his mouth at the end saying, like, don't fall on the ground. Motherfucker, you poked him in both eyes, man. Come on. Like, what if, if someone poked you in both eyes, I'm sure you're not going to be doing, you know, just wildly throwing punches. You're going to go right to your eyes like this. I mean, I, I don't know. But, um. There's a card this weekend with Chris with with uh, Chris Curtis and Brendan Allen. Um, should be a fun fight, but I'm looking forward to UFC 300 in a week from uh, Saturday. That's the one I'm looking forward to, and I'll talk about that one next week. Okay, that's good. We're wrapping up Combat Corner. We're getting to the end of the episode. As I promised you earlier today, I was going to have a special moment for you guys, and I'm just going to rant off a little bit. Not necessarily a rant, but just a thought. The New York Yankees are fucking back. I just want to say that. The New York Yankees are fucking back. Juan Soto, you belong in pinstripes. Juan Soto, we love you. Um, I'm not a prisoner of the moment. I've been waiting for a true Yankee to get in the Bronx since the biracial angel named Derek Jeter. I've been waiting for it. I've been waiting for it. There are a couple guys that came in, and I'm like, oh, they're going to carry the mantle, and they just fumbled it. But Juan Soto looks like he wants all. What the kids say? He wants all the smoke. He wants, he wants the attention. He wants the accolades. He wants to bring the 28th one home. Because I feel like the baseball gods are, baseball gods are uh, punishing us for Alex Rodriguez, even though he had an amazing World Series that year. But they're punishing us because, you know, he cheated. Let's be honest. And um, they're like, you know, we're not going to let you guys just get further. But Juan Soto's here. So I hope, even though I'm not a fan of our GM, I'm not even going to say his name because he's 
I'm not going to say his name. Do the right thing. Don't even let this guy hit free agency. Give him the half a billion he deserves. And he, I think he can carry the mantle for the future for us. So I think I wanted to leave this episode by saying it's, it's, it feels good to be a Yankees fan again. Um, I've been living in purgatory for a very long time, watching some of our players rob us and cash their checks for doing nothing. I'm not going to say any of their names. But being a Yankees fan again is amazing. I'm going to be in the Bronx in two months to watch a game, actually two games. And uh, Juan Soto, thank you. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, he's actually from Dominican Republic. My mother's from the Dominican Republic, so shout out to you uh, for that. And um, I'm just, I just want to shout out to all the guys around the world that have pinstripe hats. Some of you fake fans that, that own fitted caps and you have no, no clue what we stand for. We're winners over here. Yankees fans are winners. We have 27 of those things. And um, shout out to you, Rudy. Thank you for put that, putting that on. Uh, I love your tattoo. I'm going to actually add one to my body. And uh, I told myself I'll add one when we get the 28th. And we're going to get that number 28. So, yeah, this one was a, it was, was a, this was a sign of appreciation for Juan Soto and all New York Yankees fans around the world. I hear you. I see you. And we're coming. We're coming. That that that's it. That's all I got. That, that's, you that, that's you mother Woo! you love it. You motherfucking Yankee fans do this shit. Love it all the fucking time. Y'all are worse. Th- y'all are almost as bad as the UM fans who say, "Oh, the U is back after every every beginning of the year. The U is back. The U is back. The Yankees, the pinstripe, this and that, the pennant. It, it, y'all y'all have not been that good since Jeter left. Y'all." Or Alex Rodriguez, y'all had what have y'all been doing? Y'all well, have, what, what, what do you base good on? Winning a World Series or what y'all went? They to. were in the ALCS multiple times. They were a game away against the cheap ass <laughs> Astros, where <laughs> the games were clearly being freaking That's cheap. They were being che- two, they got cheated out of that times, World Series two times in the past 15, 20 years. Y'all had like y'all be there. What are you talking about? They win ninety. Nick, educate yourself before you speak. How, how, how many times have y'all been? They've there? literally they've literally not had a losing season since you were in diapers. How many times have diapers? Nineteen ninety two was their last <laughs> losing season. You were four or five years old. So you might not. You might have just got out of diapers. No, I was out of diapers at the age of one. Rudy, <laughs> get the fuck. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all are like Bro. y'all. Y'all are like you will fans, man. Y'all always you. You haven't, you haven't won ten games but once in, you, since since I was in college. You almost. come out. Like, you come out here every year, one sixty two and zero. Well, they're six and one right now, Nick. <laughs> they six and they swept Houston in Houston. And guess what? I thought Aaron Bunch should have retired after that game because he looked like he won the World Series, Don. I can't wait. When we won the fourth game, he looked like he won the World Series. I can't wait for y'all to fall on y'all face like y'all. And we're doing with Garrett Cole not even pitching right now. And we won today in the in the eleventh inning, six to five in Arizona. I can't we went six and one in the freaking first seven. I trip, can't bro. wait for y'all to fall on y'all face like y'all always. I do. know you can't because you're a fucking hater. Shout out to the Miami Marlins. Of I went, to, I went, I went to their game. Baby. I, I went to their game today. 2000, 2003, baby. 2003, yeah. baby. 1997, yeah. baby. That, shout that out. one hurts. That one hurts to this day. Yeah, yeah, baby. Dontrell Willis, baby. Shout out to Preston Wilson. Right, shout man. out to all my boys on the team, baby, who did they thing, there, baby. Donald, that was beautiful. There's to watch Juan Soto in that first shout out, series. Shout out, Alex. Thirty. Shout out, like, Alex Gonzalez, you can't baby. Can't ask for a better start. To hit five, th- and he has an impact on Cabrera, who looks awesome. Volpe looks awesome. I mean, hell, Judge finally did something today. Now, we got to fix this John Giancarlo Stanton thing still. He's hitting only 120 still. I mean, I can't stomach watching him anymore. But I, 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 I'm i with you, baby. Yeah, because y'all want to take our players. That's what y'all get. Stop touching our yeah. shit. Y'all want to overpay yeah, for yeah, everybody. Yeah. That's good for y'all, okay. baby. Shout out to the 2013, baby. Okay. So, Spoken like a true hater. Uh, Alex that being said, man, we're going to segue off. Guys, this... I got, I got, oh one, I got I one, one quick thought uh, before we go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. You good? I can't hear. I was going to sign off. So what oh. do your thought? Oh, I wanted to talk real quick about the Angel Reese thing. Also, I just want to ask Nick, where do you think Bronny James is going to go? He's in the portal. I think he ends up in Ohio State. It's Ohio State or UCLA. I don't think he's leaving California. He's either going going back to Ohio. When Ohio State is going to stay in California, go to UCLA. Uh, I'm if I'm Pat Riley, I'm Pat. or I'm or I'm the Miami Hurricanes. I go get him because then I'm I, I work something out with 
Pat Riley to go draft. <laughs> Listen here, Rudy. I'm thinking about the Miami Heat, baby. I'm I'm trying to get LeBron James, and I'll take LeBron James at 41 years old, 40 years old for another year. If if you give me his son, I don't give a damn. Bring them all together. We're going we're going for another championship down here. 2012, 2013 season all over again in Miami. We we live and live on Biscayne, baby. We having fun. Not on South Beach. We're on Biscayne. Uh, we're not exactly. Uh, but where would, I, where would I go if I was him? Um, um, what's the options again? I think it's Ohio State or UCLA. I can't see one anywhere else but that. But uh, I could be wrong. UC, he'll probably do UCLA. He'll probably stay close. But I think what's best for him to get away from his family. I agree. I think Ohio State would be the, probably the better option. Get away from his family. Go do your own thing. Get away from all the LeBron things. So. That comes with it. LeBron probably still come to the games and things of that nature, but he won't be the spectacle as much because he won't be in Ohio as much as mm-hmm. he is in Cali. He's right there. Get away from your dad just for a little bit. I'm not saying a lot. Just for a little bit. Separate yourself. Do your own thing. And then later on after the year, we'll see what happens if you're an NBA prospect or not. I just want to finish on this last thing. Angel Reese, I truly wish the best for this young woman. People want to call me a hater when I make comments and critiques about things. I don't understand that term anymore because it's like, if you criticize someone, you're a hater because if that's the case, then Stephen A. Smith is the biggest hater on the planet as is every person that's on television. Cause that's literally what they do all day is crit- is, is critique things. Crit- criticism. If all you do is praise people, they never get better. I balance praise. I think she is a dog of a player. When I say dog, like a, a rod, Do I think she's a tremendously skilled player? No. I think she can get a lot better. I think she needs to work on her game because she's going to be playing against a bunch of big six foot five, six foot six women who can ball in the WNBA. But you cannot puff your chest and always, and and puff, puff your chest out when it's going good. But then when you lose, have a sob story and cry. And, and sit in a press conference weeping about how you've gotten death threats and you've gotten, you're sexualized and you're this and you're that. You puffed your chest out and you know what? Caitlin Clark didn't give you the smoke that she could have given you. She did, she acted in a professional manner, shook your hand. She didn't, I would have done a double, du- I mean, I wouldn't have because I, I talk shit about it, but a double DX suck it with followed by you can't see me, and then I'll shake your hand. But she didn't do that. She shook her hand and all that. But you can't come in a press conference after, boo-hoo crying, and then voice all the things that have happened to you in the past year and how you're not happy. Sweetheart, when you post certain things of yourself on social media, you leave them for people to say something about. And when you sit here and say you've been sexualized, you should not be posting things that would make men sexualize you. That's a that's a that's just a, a men have enough of a vivid imagination to sexualize just about anything. We that's who we are as men. We you see a woman with clothes on, you're picturing her without them. Am I wrong, gentlemen? I know you don't want to admit it publicly, but I, that's I, what I most don't agree with that. You don't? No, I, 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 I agree with you. It's close. It's, it's, you're it's, you're it, happens, a, it happens you're a lot. Going to a club, you're going to a club. You, a woman's wearing a tight skirt. Yeah. You're picturing her not with that tight yeah, skirt. Basically. We, you're, you're seeing everything. You, yeah. You go to the beach. Let's keep it real. Women are in thongs. You're looking at them. Yeah. They don't wear thongs because they want to impress themselves. They're looking. They're wearing thongs. Nick, you have a six pack. You don't take your shirt off to make men look. You make take it off because you look good, bro. Yeah. It is what it is. And women look at that. Let's not lie to ourselves. I don't take mine off because I have a one pack, a big round belly. So the fact is, you cannot post stuff about yourself. Not to mention, you're on the court with lengthy ass eyelashes, makeup, shorts tucked under to cup. You, to, everything that's done is to sexualize yourself. Men don't have to do it when you do it yourself and you do it for money. Damn, I hate a great with Rudy. Huh? I hate agreeing with you. Yeah, but you don't have to do it for money. Like, you're a ball player. I don't care how you look when you play ball. You might, but that's you doing it for you. And let's be real. We know why some men watch women's basketball. It's because because 90% of women's basketballers are not sexualized because they're not attractive to most men. So the fact of the matter is you cannot be puffing your chest out and then when you lose, cry 
and talk about how people have hurt your feelings because it gets worse as you get older. I wish you the best. I truly do. I hope you do great. But if you want to know about hate, LeBron James has been hated for 20 years. He has experienced hate beyond hate from a lot of people. You have to ignore it. You're making millions of dollars. Fuck what anybody else thinks. On that note, I, I just want to say, if you're going to play the villain role, and I know she said that she didn't ask for it, but you kind of did. You kind of did. You, or, or you stepped into it when people, you know, said she, that you... She brought a crown to the bench so before you, the game. You kind of did all the uh, extra things. But I'm going to say, if you're going to do it, go 10 toes fucking down, stand up for what you did. Even in the fucking loss, take it like, as a grain of salt, go out there and say, hey, man, the better team did win. And that's what it was. But if we played them again, we'll probably beat them. And, and you know, I, I I rock with that type of stuff. I don't the whole coming back and we're saying this and that after we was talking shit and or being the tough motherfucker all all the time. And I get it; it could be kind of you know, tiring, keep doing it and fighting against it. But man, man, rock in it, man. Do what you gotta do. Talk your shit. Have fun. I don't give a fuck. All the people like Rudy who. Cry about it. Who loves it? Really behind door, behind closed doors. He loves that hard nosed shit. Man, keep doing it, man. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. Make your money. Talk your shit, young woman. And um, enjoy the draft. I hope you, you know, I hope you work on your game a little bit more, because it's ooh, look, it could use some work. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up right there, uh, guys. Uh, uh, but she's a yeah, fun player Angel. to watch. Okay, cool. Angel Reese, I wish you nothing but the best. I Wish you nothing but the best. Uh, their views are not my views, and they are not the views of Come On Now, the podcast. Come On Now podcast, it's his own IP. Those guys are their own personalities. We're, 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 we're our own entity. Oh, uh, yeah, with that being said, I love all things women. I'm an advocate, I'm an ally. And yeah. Uh, we are going to. <laughs> Look at this are, fake ass dude. What the we fuck? Are going to, <laughs> we are going to jump off now of this week's episode. Of love the episode. Oh, Come on, oh my God, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dr. Phil oh. here. Rudy, please tell them where they can find us. Please tell them. Facebook, where. Instagram, and uh, TikTok. Come on now, podcast on X. Come on now, pod. We're 42 subscribers from 400. Make it happen this week, baby. Let's get it. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.